Hello again, everybody. This is Jamie Kelly with EAP Society, and I'm here to do a quick take on something that I had a chance to read before anybody else did, uh, From Here to the Great Unknown, Lisa Marie Presley and Riley Keough. This was an amazing read. It's pretty quick, uh, 281 pages. It's, it's a pretty quick read. I think I got, got it read in less than four hours, something like that. There are aspects of this that remind me so much of some of the smaller books that came out in the 80s, and the font is pretty big. So, you know, that's uh, not going to be too big of a thing. And I think the other thing that reminds me of the 80s books is the blue uh, on the inside. But uh, anyway, really looking forward to hearing what um, Riley has to say with Oprah on, uh, I think it's going to be on CBS. John and I are going to do a live stream just after. And yeah, uh, incredibly poignant, incredibly sad. Um, just a lot of trauma and a lot of trauma, a lot of drama. And, uh, but a lot of good times as well. There's uh, some really great recollections in this. Now, I don't want to give away too many specific things for uh, those who may not know some of these, so that way it kind of hits fresh when you read the book. But uh, no one is either whitewashed or vilified too much. It really reads as her just kind of processing her feelings. And in some cases, she even talks about how she felt then versus what she thinks looking back now. So you do get a sense of both of those things as well. And she tries to give as honest an assessment as she can from her perspective and trying to see. Uh, so that's pretty interesting. I thought that was really good. The memories that she has uh, from Graceland, the memories that she has afterward, and you know the uh, the rocky relationship that she and her mother had over the years, and then how that kind of got better as uh, they both got older, it really paints an interesting and nuanced picture. That's not again. It just seems like she's just telling things as she remembers them, which is incredibly refreshing. That's the way we like to do when we do interviews and things, it's the way we like to do it. So hearing that uh, or seeing that on the page from uh, the book uh, really was uh, special for me in particular, just because that's the way I like to process that. That's the way I like to have that information given to me anyway. So that's pretty cool. Um, what she recounts about her dreams of Elvis is heartbreaking and beautiful and so interesting and it's just you can the pictures that she paints with the words you can just you really get a visual sense of things even through some incredibly traumatic experiences that will leave a lot of readers jaws on the floor uh, she went through a lot over the course of, of her life, and she doesn't shy away from any of it, but uh, she just kind of kind of gives the account and just kind of lets it sit where it is. And in some cases, it's just truly mind-blowing. And wow, some of these segments, I, I had mentioned to John last night, I said some of these segments, the, the book is not so much a book as a nuclear bomb. Um, uh, and it kind of goes back to if there's one person on earth who is probably lucky that Elvis Presley is not around, it's probably Michael Edwards. Um, but, uh, cause if you heard any of these stories, woof. Um, yeah. So there's just, yeah. Uh, for an Elvis fan that's more interested in, in pieces of Elvis's life, if you're interested in like the psychology of maybe Elvis is thinking in some of the later years. Um, this book is incredibly heartbreaking in, in that respect, um, both for what you hear from Elvis and how she, what she tells about that, but then what she recounts and also what Riley recounts toward the end of Lisa's life. And, you know, so often people's lives go in, in patterns, in psychological patterings, in just, you know, life patterns. And 
you definitely get the sense of that here. Um, someone, uh, uh, Steve had asked, like, does it really differentiate when Riley is speaking versus when Lisa is speaking? And yes, absolutely it does. It has two different types of font. It's got one type of font for when Lisa's talking and another when Riley's talking. And Riley's context is important too because she fills in information either from Danny or things that she heard from Lisa. And I do like how they use the different fonts because you do get a, a, a real sense of, okay, this is Lisa talking, this is Riley talking. And th what they both kind of say really fills in the context. Um, it is mostly a Lisa's book, but I'd say two-thirds, one-third kind of a split. But uh, yeah, so you do get a, a real sense of the perspectives, which is which is very good. And uh, I have the audiobook on pre-order that doesn't come out until tomorrow. I'm really interested to see, to, to listen to how that is. Because I, yeah, I, I'm... Uh, I know that uh, Julie Roberts, I believe, is doing the some of the narration for that book, or for the audiobook version. And um, I do hope that we get a good chunk of Lisa talking about these things because that's, yeah. Um, I'm always more fascinated by the people telling the stories themselves in audio. You get more of a sense of nuance and what they mean and, and how they mean it when they say certain things because, you know, uh, some folks have a... Uh, sort of a wry sense of humor and you kind of have to parse a bit more if you're just reading it as a uh, written word it's easier to do and you can actually hear their voice and how they're saying what they're saying they also talks about speaking of the music uh riley talks about some of the songs and what they were based in and some of those songs we knew kind of what the meanings were but then there are others that we get information on that we didn't know before so that's actually pretty cool and uh, we actually got to see Lisa. She came to uh, Woolies in Des Moines. And let me tell you, she put on an amazing show. It was, it was an awesome show. Um, and we gave her a little keychain that says, I love rock and roll. And since we know that she liked Joan Jett, uh, we knew she'd get a kick out of it. And she had a really cool re reaction to it. So anyway, if you're interested in pieces of Elvis history, this is a big one. Highly recommended. And uh, so definitely check this out. From here to the great unknown, Lisa Marie Presley and Riley Keough, this is a wonderful piece of Elvis history. And as you know, our whole thing is making sure Elvis history is not lost to history. So uh, you can go to the website if you want to become a member and all that kind of stuff. But I just want to do a real quick uh, shout out about this that really enjoyed this. Um, uh, just no one, like I said, no one is whitewashed, but also no one is vilified too badly. It's just a straight telling uh, from Lisa's perspective. And I think that, you know, it's pretty, pretty cool. And uh, Riley even, uh, even checks her mom on a couple of these things. But um, yeah, <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty cool. It's pretty interesting. So, and like I said, uh, John and I are going to talk about um, the Oprah appearance with uh, Riley. And then, so just after that gets done, on CBS, we'll go uh, live and we'll talk about it. And uh, so, yeah, just, wow. So if you get a chance, definitely pick this up. Uh, my preference is audiobook, just because I like hearing it from the person's own perspective. You get to hear it from their own lips, from their own voice, um, as they were saying it. So that way, you, didn't, you not only have the words that they said, but the way that they said it, because that sometimes gets lost in translation. And I think it's really important that we that that not be the case and that's one of the reasons why when we do uh, our interviews we like to be right there with the people whenever we can be because you are able to get that greater sense of what they mean when they say it and that's so vital and so i want to take a moment to thank riley for doing this helping her mother because i guess she Agreed to help her mother only about a month before her mom passed away. So, wow. Um, but Lisa's memories, Riley's memories um, are so important here. And I think that this is uh, pretty good for 
For Elvis fans that are interested in this uh, in this part of Elvis's life, and Lisa was just the light of it. So definitely important stuff as far as I'm concerned. So anyway, this is Jamie Kelly with the Elvis Archival Preservation Society. I want to say thank you to all of our members who make so many things possible. Thank you to every one of our members, especially our Colonel, Colonel Miles Foreman. Thank you, Colonel. And if there's one theme that this book can show us, it's be good to yourselves, be good to each other. And from us, always, TCB. My society, my society, here with all the friends I want to see. Don't need no high society to get me where I want to be. My society, yeah, that's for me. Oh, my society, yeah, that's for me. Oh, my society.